So here at the American Heart Association, we had a top 10 findings or advances in women's cardiovascular health made in the last few years. And the most important information that we have about women has really come out to the differences between men and women, the sex differences. For example, for peripheral arterial disease, something that's quite common actually in women. But what we found is that women's symptoms are different than men. So the classic claudication symptoms are not always what we see in women. Additionally, we found that women are more likely to have functional loss and even immobility as a consequence of peripheral arterial disease compared with men. Yet men and women benefit from exercise interventions equally. So we should be applying those in women with peripheral arterial disease. Additionally, we had a lot of conversations about atrial fibrillation and stroke. For atrial fibrillation, we're finding that that is, you know, it's definitely less prevalent in women and it seems to be height related more than a sex difference. But there is some sex differences about atrial fibrillation. For example, the more children a woman has, the more likelihood that they might go on and develop atrial fibrillation. But there's a lot of other important issues we discussed. Many of the things that predispose men and women to atrial fibrillation are modifiable risk factors, particularly weight, sleep apnea, control of hypertension, and those are things that we can change in our patient population. So it is important, atrial fibrillation is important for both men and women, but there's also some things that if you get atrial fibrillation as a woman, you're at a greater risk of a stroke. So that is really important and women are less likely to get anticoagulation despite the fact that they would benefit greater. So I don't know why we're withholding medications in women. Um, if we're worried about their falling risk or if we're worried about their bleeding risk, and those are certainly justifiable concerns, but we should always be weighing what is the risk of stroke. Stroke was also discussed as well. I, there was some sex-specific risk factors that predispose a woman to stroke, and a lot of those are related to pregnancy, specifically things like hypertension during pregnancy, preeclampsia, the worst form of hypertension, um, and uh, uh, preterm delivery. All of those predispose women to a greater risk of stroke, and yet they're not really questions that we routinely ask when we're doing a risk assessment in our women patients. So really important to note because those put them at a very greater threshold of developing stroke in their future. And when we talk about women in general related to those pregnancy issues, those risk factors need to be asked for stroke risk but also for heart disease risk. And I think that that we saw that those sex specific risk factors are things we should be asking all of our patients because of that. They're quite common, that's the thing. And then they're also young women. When women have, obviously when they get pregnant, they're in their 20s and 30s most often. 10 years later, they are likely to go on and have these cardiovascular events. They are the young women we're seeing with heart attacks and strokes. They're the ones that we can do the greatest job at prevention, but if we don't ask those questions, we don't necessarily know that. And interestingly enough, those same risk factors did get into the new lipid guidelines this year, basically saying that those are risk enhancing risk factors and that we should be asking our women about that. So maybe we would be more aggressive in that population. We also had great discussion about the advances just in terms of guidelines related to women, um, that we have guidelines for women that are born with congenital heart disease and related to their pregnancy. And it's important for us to know that they exist and use them in the appropriate patients. That's the way we're gonna save more women's lives.